within a curious soul. Goldilocks Productions presents the Deep Reading. <laughs> Connecting you to your soul show. This is Suzanne Wyman, the Deep Psychic. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. I want you to please think about the conversation that you hear and see if you relate to part of it. If you do, this message is for you. I want you to be included. I want you to know that this is the universe reaching out to you and answering your questions. You are part of something greater than yourself. The universe is connecting to you and answering your questions. If you'd like to call in, you can call in at uh, area code 206-806-9965. And the name of the show is... The Deep Psychic Reading. Today I have somebody with me who um, really helps me by um, just allowing me to uh, talk about what it means to work as a psychic um, and how that whole process unfolds and how that information uh, helps people to create change in their life as the result of guidance. So, um, it is nice for me to talk with somebody who has been able to take and use, excuse me, talking to a psychic as a way of creating change in their life. So in that way, it helps me to balance the conversation. Hi there. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I, I'm fine. I'm nervous, but fine. <laughs> it makes me laugh. It's so silly. I'm just as nervous as you are. Let's hope that we. Stay I don't nervous. think so, but that's okay. <laughs> well, thank you for working through your nervousness and having the conversation with me. Anyway, I really appreciate that. Uh, so uh, we talked the other day, and we talked about the fact that you had met with uh, a really famous psychic. So do you mind terribly sharing part of that story or as much of that story as you feel comfortable with sharing that story with us um, and and doing a little bit of explanation about how you came to that place to use a psychic? Okay. I was... um, The psychic I met with, her name is Avery, and at the time she was um, Nancy Reagan's psychic, she talked often to Washington, um, giving advice. Um, and I, I found her. I don't really remember exactly how I came across her, but I was doing some art therapy, and I told my therapist that I wanted to uh, see the psychic, and her advice to me was just to be myself, and let her feel my energy and give me a reading, not to go in with a whole, a whole, you know, list of things I wanted to know. Okay. So I was kind. I was kind of put off because the first thing she said to me was, "I may get a call from Washington, which I will have to take." And I <laughs> thought, "Whoa, <laughs> what? What's this? I'm paying for this too." <laughs> so that, it was kind of it was kind of off putting, and I'd never been to a psychic, so I didn't really know what to expect. So that was that was my first um, experience with her. Okay. So, and um, so can I ask yes. a couple of questions? Okay. Good. Of course. So, so yeah. So first of all. Um, Everything that I have read about Avery talks about her as the astrologer and how Nancy Reagan took the calendar, which nobody had ever done before. She took the calendar. She never returned the calendar to the White House, and she used those um, appointments and time frames in conjunction with this psychic astrologer to time when... uh, Ronald Reagan made announcements, and that was how his presidency was able to sort of like, I mean, he was able to move through some very interesting obstacles 
and create some changes in the world with, with very little backlash because he followed the advice of astrology. So my question to you is, is that, you know, and I never, I never knew that she was a psychic. I mean, I never knew that she was, you know, like listed as a psychic. But afterwards, mm-hmm. after you did the reading with her, do you think that that conversation actually helped you to make any changes in your life? It just basically gave me more insight hmm. into what was going on in my life at the time. Okay. Um, it gave me some inner strength, um, which I I realized later it did when I was facing some difficulties. Um, one thing she told me, um, when she started, I asked her if I could record the conversation. Mm-hmm. And she told me that her energy was so powerful that other people who had recorded her energy had a lot of static and they couldn't they couldn't get the conversation. Mm. So I I did record it. When I got home I listened to it and there was a lot of static in it. But I was able to um recover the the things that she told me. I listened to it several times. Um, the first thing she said to me was that I was a very old soul mm. and she had trouble looking at me because I was so old. Mm. And it, I don't know, it kind of gave me some strength to go through some things I would have to go through later to go back and realize that she had told me that. Okay. So I felt like if I had that spiritual strength that I could make it through these things. The other thing she gave me that I just remembered was she gave me a mantra. She said, this is your mantra, and it was Om Namah Shivaya. And that part was interesting because a friend of mine, um, when I lived in Colorado, told me this mantra helped her a lot, and she gave me a recording of it which I'd been using, and it was like, how in the world did she know that? Huh. So that was interesting. It's very interesting, yes. So um, I find find that um, people often ask that question when they're having a dialogue with an intuitive, a psychic, an energy worker, a light worker, whatever the name may be. Um, they often ask, well, how could you know that? And I suppose, um, I think it's interesting. I think it's such an interesting question because I never think of the how, and I try really hard not to listen to what I say because because I believe that it is the universe, God, spirit speaking through me. I don't think I need to know how the information came. And I think the more detached I stay from the information, the more assistance I can be to the individual who I'm speaking with because the message is not for me. The message is for you. So I never think about how I know it because I don't know it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Does that, make, does that make sense? It does. I, I understand. Yes. Okay. So... The interesting thing I like about the conversation with you is that you talk about you talk about psychics in a way that's very clear and concise, and you talk about what happens inside of the reading. And a lot of people, um, first of all, I want to ask you something: Were you afraid to go and get a psychic reading, or were you just excited? I wasn't afraid. No, I don't remember being afraid. Hmm. Okay. It was kind of a question, do I, I don't know, do I believe in this or not? Kind of that kind of thing. But I I was excited to go, yes. Okay. So just talking to you as a person, what do you think of the person who says they're afraid to do it? What do you think they're really talking about? Uh, 
Um, hmm. Maybe there's something they don't want to know huh. about themselves, or or oh, maybe they just don't they don't believe in it, or they just think it's a bunch of um, nonsense, so to speak. I think the skeptic is the easiest person for a psychic to work with. Somebody who doubts. It doesn't matter what you say to them; they're always going to doubt it. So that's sort of mm-hmm. like, you know, to me, I put like a little scratch line right through it and, and just march on forward. But <clears throat> Well, when I went to her, I don't, I don't know that I believed in psychics myself. Okay. I just, wanted, I just wanted the experience. I wasn't really looking for anything. Okay. Well, maybe okay. I was. Or why, why would I want to go in the first place? So I don't know. Just to see what she had to say. (laughs) Yes. But what else? Did she tell you anything else in the reading that you remember? And this was a long time ago, by the way. She she died. She lived to be quite old, and she died. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This was like 29 years ago. Okay. That I went to her. Okay. And um, and just, uh, just she, kind of she, go ahead. Uh, how much? How much did it cost to get a reading with Avery at the time? Remember, she's consulting uh, with Washington. Right. It didn't cost a, a lot, but you know, if I was working and it was, it cost a lot to me. I don't remember actually. Huh. I'm thinking somewhere around fifty dollars or something. I don't remember. Wow. Wow. Huh. Okay. Okay, so... And it was for um, an hour reading. That's amazing. Excuse me. That's just That's okay. Bless you. That's just amazing. So... So you had another conversation with another psychic that you talked about. Yes. Uh, do you have another... Um, so, okay... So you go and you don't have any expectations. You sit down with a psychic and then you do a conversation. And sometimes the information doesn't make sense right away, but sometimes it makes sense later. But you remember it. Yes, I do. Almost mm-hmm. like it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so she, I like that. She did like give me part. some information about uh, someone I worked with. Okay. Um. Um, that that person was not good for me, mm-hmm. and uh, were very uh, a very evil person. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I'm curious as to. Well, first of all, it did it turn out to be true that that person was e- was not was, you know, yeah. It was a bad person and was bad for you. That turned out to be true. Yes. And did it help it did. you to to circumvent her? So, just talk about that just a little bit. No, no uh, rigid lines here. Just sort of a conversation. And talk about how you sort of handled that. That's an interesting piece of information. We spend more time with the people we work with than we do with our own families often. So that's right. That, yeah. So. Tell me, tell me how that kind of unfolded and how that worked out. Well, I realized that person was using uh, me a lot, mm-hmm. um, taking some things that I'd given that person and using them as if they were their own things, mm-hmm. and also how that person mistreated other people in the same oh. way, but pretended to be like my my best buddy, my best friend, in order to um, get me to teach them or share some of my knowledge with them that they could use. Hmm. Um, Okay. And it just, I just didn't, I distanced myself more psychically from that person Okay. If that makes any sense. So what happened? What happened? 
yeah, what happened? I mean, you distanced yourself from the person and you continued to work with them. Did they change jobs? Did you change jobs? No, I continued to work there. Okay. And it, it was fine. I just realized what was going on. Ah. And I confronted the person a couple times. You know, that you can't do that. Okay. I, I stuck up for myself more. And so then that person just stopped using you in that way. That person continued to try, but it, it didn't work. Huh. Well, I like that. That's a great story. I mean, so you got the information, and then it was up to you as to whether or not you actually used the information. But she hit on something that was really um, was really important. There is something really kind of so dishonest about an individual that takes credit for somebody else's work. We don't really even know where to begin. The ethics, the morality, and the intention are so bad. I mean, where do you really begin with somebody like that? And so you just did... You know, you just did the right thing. You didn't get too upset about it. You just stopped doing it. And then it, even though the person persisted, you just didn't participate. And then it worked for you. You were still able to work there. That's kind of an interesting, I mean, that's a really an interesting story. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, um, did, you, did you want to know about my other psychic experience? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, Absolutely. this this psychic was given to me um, by um, a, f- a friend who had used this psychic and used this psychic every year just to give an update of, of her life. Mm-hmm. And so um, she gave me the phone number of this psychic, who, by the way, I lived in California. This psychic was on the East Coast. And she did um, readings by telephone. Mm -hmm. So um, I called her, and what happened on the phone was she asked me my name and my date of birth. And then she set up an appointment with me Mm -hmm. um, for another date, and I would call her. And the date was um, several weeks away. And I I called her, and then she asked me my name again, and she told me some things that um, I could, I just you know it's amazing I don't know how well I know how it works but it was just it's amazing. <laughs> First thing she asked me was my name again because I guess she wanted to access my energy. Mm-hmm. She told me, um, she asked me if I knew the name of this of a person, and I said, well, that's, that was my father's name. And she said, well, he wants you to know that because you forgave him, he was able to move into the light, hmm. so- which gave me, it was a good feeling to know that. Mm-hmm. Because I guess when you forgive, you forgive someone mostly for yourself, right. because you don't want the the hatred and all of that to take over your being, to be in your heart. So it was comforting, not only for that reason, for me to forgive him, but also because it's so powerful that it could even affect another person. So that forgiveness. Just just sort of a question to clarify. Did you forgive your father when he was alive or did you forgive, forgive him afterwards after he had died? I forgave him when he was alive, but at the time I forgave him, I had been in therapy. He was in the hospital suffering from Alzheimer's. Hmm. I was very, very afraid to go back to where I grew up in the Midwest and be with him. But I went to see him because I, I wanted to survive the, the being in the room with him, basically. Right. 
And when I was in the room with him, I'm, I don't know really that he knew who I was. I, I don't really know. But I, I didn't tell him verbally that I forgave him. It was a mental thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, so, that was it. So we're talking about a psychic, but we're also talking about a woman who works as a medium too, right? Yes. Okay. Because she, she told me other things. Okay. That she would have no way of knowing about um, the end that my husband and I had about it was 125 years old and about what had transpired in that end. Some of the people who had lived there and what happened to them. Mm-hmm. And I, okay. I did, she said that one of the, the people who owned the inn had committed suicide in the garage, which we had, uh, someone else had turned into one of the guest rooms. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they have a historical society in this community. And so after the fact, I went and looked up the history of this community and that Mm -hmm. there was a person who committed suicide who owned that in. Wow. So it was, it's just very interesting. So here's what I hear you telling me. This is what I hear you telling me. Um, You talked to a person who lived very far from you. You didn't tell her much about yourself other than your name and your date of birth. And so there's no way that she could have like looked you up or done anything like that. She just simply you use psychic energy, and in that process, she was able to tell you some things that were quite specific, the name of your father, um, you know, about things that have happened in an inn that you owned. I mean, basically, you telling me that she really gave you some very factual, logical information that could not be known any other way other than her being an intuitive, psychic human being. Right. Because she had no idea who I was. I didn't tell her who gave me the phone number. Right. She had no way of knowing anything about me. Hmm. Hmm. So let's do, a sh- let's do a short reading for you today from me, okay? And um, All right. Is that okay? If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's up to you. Totally up to you. No, of course it's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, you kind of have a gift for being fluid emotionally. You have an ability to absorb emotions, take emotions, observe emotions, analyze emotions, be around other people's emotions. You're aware of other people's emotions, and that part is harder on you, um, the awareness of it, because you wonder if it's not the fact that the emotions are difficult, but you wonder about the fact if they're aware that they're carrying these complicated, difficult emotions. So you have an awareness there. You also have an interesting ability to be extremely detached and observe things for what they are and then later on take the time to mull them over, piece them together, and puzzle them out in such a way that the analysis helps you feel better about a set of circumstances. So for you, you need clarity, you need precision, and you need analysis that you can make sense of in a direct fashion. I like the fact that you really are somebody who is extremely flexible you are able to make movement. You are able to make change. And you need people that really understand that and support that and don't question that. Interesting thing for beauty. I think that you need beauty more than you really, um, you don't even really talk about it. Beauty is like a need, like food, water, and, and a nice house. <laughs> so you do, you do need beauty around you, and you are able to see beauty. So interesting, artistic talent so do you have any hobbies that you do that are artistic? Um, I do love beauty, and I need it in my life, mm-hmm. whether it's in nature or in my personal space. Um, I'm not doing anything now. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've collaborated with um, a design person to do okay. some work, but um, not really. 
not really okay. doing any of that right now. Okay. So that's one of the things I'd just like to, you know, I mean, crafting I think would really, even small arts and crafts projects I think would bring you a sense of, of nourishment at this point in time. You also are, you also said that you're considering a move. Is that right? Well, that's right. Okay. So we'll see. On this, <laughs> what's that? I said we'll see about that. Oh, okay. Well, if you were going to make, if you're going to make a in this year, it would be it would be the end of September and October that you would make a decision about where you would like to live. You know, this period now is the time about thinking about moving, and then. Um, just thinking about it and kind of feeling your way through it. And then September and October, you'll make it somewhere between the end of September and the first part of October, you'll make a decision if there is another place that you would rather live in. So you're really flexible and good about taking and making moves. Do you use an astrologer for your moves? I have used um, astrocartography before, which is a, a type of astrology. Okay. Hmm. Actually, work? it worked, but I only used it in hindsight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, that one. That one's good. Okay. Because um, I think only once did I use it, and what happens is you pick three places you think you want to live, and they give you readings for those three places. Okay. I was having a difficult time in a place where I lived. Okay. And so after the fact, I wanted to see if there was any connection to the place I was living because a friend of mine um, was sort of into astrology and she said there was a lot of Saturn in this um, community, Saturn influence, and she also was the same sign as me. And she was leaving because of that reason. And so I wanted to see, well, what does it say for me? Okay. And so it it told me basically everything that I was going through was in that physical space. Okay, so Saturn is the um is is uh imprisonment. So if you were living <laughs> in a place that made you feel imprisoned that really wouldn't be very good, right? <clears throat> How can you really break free and be your own person and do your own life if you feel imprisoned? Mm-hmm. So uh, you made the move, and did your life, did the difficulty lift if you once you moved? Um, I'm not sure that it, I've worked through problems. Okay. I, it was yeah. very oppressive there for me when these problems came up. Hmm. Okay. And and the atmosphere there was very oppressive. I would have um I would have visions. Did you feel like something in some, your chest? No, I didn't feel that. Huh. I had so. some experiences that were, um, I would see things and, and hear voices. Huh. And once you left that, that area, it didn't happen any further? No, it didn't. Huh. Well, that's interesting. That is really mm-hmm. interesting. Okay, so did you um, did you move far away, near, or what? I just went back to California. <laughs> <laughs> I always end up back in California. Okay, very good. Wherever I go, I I always end up back here. Okay, well, California is it. To to get ready for another place, I don't know. I'm getting kind of old for this, so I don't know how many places I can go to. I may just, just be here. Okay. All right, Sharon, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for the story about... The um, the Reagan Psychic Avery, great story. Enjoyed it really very, very much. And uh, you're always welcome to call me. And thanks for sharing today. It was fabulous. You're welcome. Thank you for your insight. Oh, you're very welcome. 
Enjoy your day. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye, Thank Suzanne. You. Bye-bye. Okay. What, uh, what a great story. I always am curious to see what happens for people when they uh, go to a psychic and what happens. I can't tell you how many times people have come back to me and said, you said the following to me, and I'm thinking, gosh, I don't remember that. But if you say so, okay. Um, I worked at one location in Orange, at Cafe Tutu Tango. I worked there from December of 98 to February of 2019. And I got to see on the very last night, the restaurant lost its lease, um, people came in and they said, oh, yeah, you know, you told me this girl was right for me. And so we worked out our problems. We ended up getting married and here's our two kids. I got that story over and over again. It was really, really quite wonderful to see um, what happens as the result of, you know, supporting people, encouraging them, and, um, you know, saying, stay with your dream, believe in yourself, you can do this. So it's really nice. It is always nice to hear what happens as the result of a conversation with somebody, and I honestly and truly don't remember it. The next person that we have coming on the phone is somebody who is completely as brand new to me as this person is to you. So let's... um, Let's bring Robert on and um, and have a conversation. Hello, Robert. Hello there. How are you? Really good. How are you? Phenom- phenomenal considering everything that's happening in the world and continually getting better. Wow. Okay. That's, that's really good. You know... Um, I, I know that it's really, really difficult for everybody at the moment considering this, and I don't really want to give a lot of time over to it. So I'm asking people to simply, as best as they can, go forward, believe in their, believe in themselves, and believe that everything they need is there for them. You know, you take action, you're responsible, um, you know, you do all sorts of things, but at the same time, uh, the highest thought is is that you really believe that you're going to be taken care of. So it is challenging, <clears throat> but it's also challenging uh, us to think differently about this. The, the way the world was is gone. The way the world is is changed, and, and that's what happens. So it is difficult. Change is hard, right? Well... <laughs> I mean, they are for most people. You know, I've sort of learned to embrace change. Um, You know, I mean, I understand a lot of what's going on at some degree, and obviously there's certain degrees you really don't understand. It depends upon what your belief systems are around many different things. But myself personally, I've always embraced change. Okay, cool. So tell, tell everybody here who's listening today and who could listen to this later, Um, Tell them your name and tell them what you do. You know, my name's Robert Butwin. I've been an entrepreneur for the last 50 years. Um, I started in our family business. We started the high school ward cheerleading jack business back in the 1930s. There was too much family in the family business. I was looking for a way to escape that. And along that pathway, I ended up running a nightclub before I ended up getting married to my mm-hmm. wife, who I've been married to for 33 years, and I'm wow. an entrepreneur's entrepreneur. Let's put it that way. I could go on and on. It depends on how much you want to know about my background. No, 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 no. That's good. That's really good. Um, I I love the fact that you um, very carefully include the fact that you had a, had a nightclub business, and then you got married. Having a nightclub business and being married seems to be a bit of a a bit of a burden at moments, I would imagine, huh? It would never happen with my wife. I mean, I met my soulmate after I got out of the nightclub business. Uh, in fact, I could tell you, I could tell you a funny story because it was like, you know, how I met her. I met her in one of the personals before there was like online dating. I wasn't necessarily even looking to, um, you know, meet the person that was going to end up being my soulmate. I was just sort of curious to see who would ever do online dating, and so we. Shortly thereafter, we started dating, and, you know, it was like when we were dating everywhere we, we would go together, we would run across somebody that I knew, you know, because I was very popular back in the Twin City area, and finally we went on our first vacation together, 
and we went to Cancun, this was before we got married, and we were in Chitsunitsu, which is uh, one of these Mayan ruins, and she turns to me and she says, finally, I've got you in a place that nobody's going to know who you are. And within five minutes, swear to God, somebody yells <laughs> out my name, the guy I played basketball with. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Robert, do you like psychics? Do you enjoy psychics? Do you socialize with psychics and network with psychics? I network with psychics. I like psychics. You know, I don't judge people no matter what, who they are because I realize that we, you know, everybody's coming from a different perspective. I mean, I'm part of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. I'm very holistic, holistically inclined in every aspect. Okay. But I learned, you know, I learned in a world where everybody's different. You just can't be really too judgmental in life today. Okay. So... <clears throat> So let's let's just do a reading for you. Um, sure. But so, so I haven't I haven't actually done a reading for you or met with you in person or offline. I called you, connected me with somebody. Uh, I found you on LinkedIn. You connected me with somebody. I called you back. I said, you know, I, I need something a little bit different here. Um, and then you gave me a list. And then I said, well, why don't you do the show with me? And I did this with you yesterday. I need you for 20 minutes. So you and I actually don't know each other. And I, other than Correct. what you just told me, I don't really know much about you. I don't. I don't know anything about you, really. You like a formula. You like to be able to take a formula and um, put it into an application process. So it's not that every formula fits every situation. It's the fact that you have the ability to conceptualize what the end result should be and what it would look like. And then through a process of intuition, omens, dreams, and people, you put together the other pieces. You say, oh, I see. This person would serve as a point for where I could connect to this part of a business where I would normally not really ever think about this type of business. So you've been an entrepreneur. Um, you've had some interesting entrepreneurial experiences, <clears throat> but you are a highly analytical, problem-solving, excellent people person, need social opportunities, and you handle an amazing amount of information. You've come up with a method for keeping track of information, putting information together, and resourcing that process. You are the person who connects, details those connections. You say you're non-judgmental, but you are discriminating. Um, there are people that you might know of or you may not agree with them. You would keep them as a resource or keep them as a connection, but you may not use them personally. So for you, every person that you encounter, meet, and involve yourself with has some part to some part of your story or the story of other individuals that you connect that person with. And so your drive, your dynamic drive, is really about the connections, the feeling of belonging to other people, and see yourself as a master connector. Um, so you do have an unusual ability to be extraordinarily free of judgment <clears throat> and also a person who can be very um, accurate in how you assess things. Not negative in the sense, but just accurate in your assessment of what an individual is. Personally, I think your greatest attribute is your generosity, your ability to love people just exactly the way they are. I think the hardest thing for you is, is to cope with people that expect other people to actually do for them what they should be doing for themselves. Do you want me to comment? No, you don't have to if you don't want to. You want to talk no, about you're, no, else? you're right. I, I would say you're right on, um, that you're very accurate in your, and you know, how you're coming up with that, which I realize it's your ability that you're right on. I don't understand. I'm sorry. You're, I, you're I say that I, my belief is you're right on. You're very accurate in what you've just said. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> what sort of uh, are you? Are you in the holistic business today? You know, in life, I'm in the, hol the holistic business for for the most part. I mean, I believe that one of the biggest challenges with people is what they put in their mind, what they put in their body, and the actions they do or don't do. So, um, you know, a lot of the people hmm. I coach are nutritional manufacturers 
um, entrepreneurs at different levels. But, um, you know, I, I, I watch what I eat and I, you know, am careful with the things that I try to do or, or that I do. Okay. Okay. Really good. Really good. Um, <clears throat> any chance your wife is in this industry also? Um, she's very holistic in nature. You know, she's my biggest supporter in every aspect. You know, we've had, a, in my opinion, we've had a very blissful relationship. In fact, there was one time I was sitting around with her and two other people, and I says, my wife and I never fight, and she turns to me, she says, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Are you working on anything right now that you'd like to share with us and promote yourself for? Well, you know, I'm always working on helping people see, you know, have hope for their future. Um, even with, you know, the pandemic and everything that's going on now, and I believe that there'll be a lot of positive things that are going to come out of it, even though for the okay. for the short term there might be some changes that people have to deal with. Right. But, you know, as an entrepreneur... Uh, I'm. I've always got a big picture of things I'm working on. You know, your last caller she happened to mention MIT. Um, my mom's uh, father's brother's son. My mom's father's brother's son was president of MIT. Wow. Not so a small I come thing. from a very educated, very educated family, very entrepreneurial in every aspect, both sides of the family. Um, so I mean, you know, I've got a great, a great family life. I live in an ideal house. We help my uh, daughter and her husband buy a house a half a mile from us. So our grandkids are over here like every day. One of them's over here now. Um, but nice. you know, I'm always wor- I'm always working on what I can do to help people create a better life for themselves. Okay, good. Can I? Um get you to position the mouthpiece of your phone a little closer and speak up just a little yep. bit for me. Is this better? Oh, oh yeah, thank you very much. So, sure. um, today you're assisting people with change. Anything in particular you're assisting them with change on? Well, the the, the, the biggest thing right now is obviously with what everybody's dealing with. I mean, I love the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Because I think that really... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That shows how people, and you can get that book or movie for free by going to YouTube. But, you know, the bottom line is people deal with change differently. And, okay. you know, obviously, as you said, you know, things are going to be different definitely for a period of time. I mean, we will get through what we're dealing with. I mean, I believe that this pandemic, pandemic or, you know, the COVID-19, you know, we're going to get through that. There's no question in my mind it might be a little inconvenience i don't like the social distancing so that's the first aspect but the other part of where people need to realize is the fact that what they believe their job that was might have been secure is not any longer secure you mm-hmm. need to have a second source of income and with the okay. computer and so you know in sort of like how you and i met we met on linkedin mm-hmm. you know right there's many different methodologies of how people can meet and how you can develop strategic alliances or, you know, business kind of relationships. That's why I said when you describe me, you probably hit me right on, even though we haven't known each other. Right. That is supposed to be the art of doing a cold reading that I don't actually have to know anything about you. I mean, um, yeah, I don't. I, I don't actually. I wouldn't say that I know you. I've talked with you or or met you or anything else. I've never seen you in person. Nothing. So it is kind of it is kind of interesting. That is supposed to be the aspect of a cold reading, is that I can just sort of pick up on what's going on by listening to your voice. But you know, you are somebody who's extremely charming, and you do have some interesting social graces. It is hard for you to socialize at times. It's not because you don't want the connection with people. It's just that you're so busy feeling and sensing everything and taking all of that in that the words and the interaction and the explanation sort of um, causes you to slow down absorbing that information. So you are intuitive. You are somebody who's very perceptive about the motivation of individuals. 
um, you demonstrate a lot of applied knowledge, which is kind of interesting. You say you come from a very educated family, but you demonstrate a lot of applied knowledge, and I think you're, one of your areas of applied knowledge is your ability to assess and sum up an individual very, very quickly when you interact with that person. That's just one of your talents. Thank you, and I would agree with that. You, you learn. <laughs> I like how you say that. I would agree with that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Um, very, very good. Robert, you got anything to share with us? Any um, Something very direct, very factual, something supportive, something encouraging? Yeah, you know, encouraging is, you know, one of the things I learned early on, and two things that changed my life. I started listening to Wayne Dyer way, way, way back, mm. you know, mm. and it was about no limit person. And I came to the realization as I listened to it, not necessarily what he said, and actually I ended up speaking on stage with him, but mm-hmm. I realized that the, that I was responsible for the limits that existed in my life. Mm-hmm. See, once you take responsibility for what is, you can right. take responsibility for what will be. But unfortunately, most people are in a state of denial. And I love the acronym of denial, which is don't even notice I am lying. And unfortunately, most people are lying to themselves because they're right. make, not taking responsibility for what they really want. The second thing, you know, as far as words of wisdom, and it, I think it very much relates to what's going on. I was listening to Dr. Robert Anthony, and he talks about, we're all supposed to learn certain lessons in life. And until you learn whatever that lesson is, and everybody's got different lessons they're supposed to learn, that mm-hmm. life will continually flip you up in the lesson you should be learning. Mm-hmm. So Wayne Dyer, I can't remember the name of the man that Wayne Dyer was mentored by, but Mary Morrissey was mentored by the same man as Wayne Jack Dyer. Jack Bowen? I think it was Jack yes, Bowen from Michigan. Bowen. Yes, it was. There were three people that he mentored. He was going to set up a mentoring program, and in the end, it, it ended up being Mary Morrissey, uh, Wayne Dyer, and I can never think of the third person, but Jack Boland, that's, that's who it is. Um, Wayne Dyer is amazing. Wayne Dyer, uh, his material, his videos, and everything else. Um, he died in 2015, so, um, and we still miss him. But, yes. yeah, um, what a... What a, what an amazing amount! I think the book that everybody thinks of is um, your erogenous zones, which had nothing to do with sensuality or sexuality, but had to do with how your thinking worked. So, yeah, great, um, great person to be able to relate to. Relate to. So, any any other of the um, current greats? I mean, I like listening to Amazon has Napoleon Hill. Um, it's old movies. Um, I enjoy oh, watching yeah. Napoleon yeah, I mean, Hill. N- Napoleon Hill's great. Wayne Carnegie's great. You know, one of my favorite ones is Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was the Say guy that, that actually again. I mentored that. Anthony Robbins. Uh, the, you know, oh, yeah. Take Charge of Your Life. Paul, you know, uh-huh. um, I like Anthony so much too, the, yeah. yeah. Huh. As I say, so much I learned from Jim. Yeah. And, and actually, okay. I've spoken on stage... I've spoken on stage three different times with Jim. Okay, and say that person's name again. Jim Rohn, R O H N. Herbalife ended up paying him a mil- gave him a million dollars a year raise, oh. not to speak in front of any other network marketing companies. Um, but you know, Jim was phenomenal, and he changed so many people's lives. He tr- he was the one. You know, Anthony Robbins when he started off was living out of his car. Right. You know, working for Jim Rohn. So phenomenal. Right. Again, you can you can go to YouTube and get a, you listen to a lot of his stuff, but you know, yep. Yeah, he's really he, Anthony Robbins is really good. I like his um, material. I like what he came from, what he overcame, and everything else. Hey, Robert, will you come back on and talk with me again? I'd be happy to, anytime you want me to, Suzanne. Oh, thank you so much. Have a great day, and we'll talk very soon. You got it. Sounds good. I appreciate being on your show. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for doing it for me. It was a great favor. You're great. Okay. I look forward to our... Okay. 
what a great conversation. Uh, I start talking about uh, the actual source material of our education, our thinking, and how that process works, and it creates this evolutionary cycle and uh, we put ourselves into the position of manifestation. And now I have my um, I have my astrologer coming on here. Let's see if we can bring in Katharina. Hi there. Hey, are you there? Hey, how are you, sweetheart? I'm good. How are you? Ah, great. Oh, are you working away today? Have I I got a ten minute window with you, so let's just go into your material right away. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing Nothing in the legal field has changed much for our office. I know it's affected a lot of offices, but not not for us. We're still, you know, plowing forward. So, um, okay, good. I, you know, yeah. So, so speaking of working and going forward, we are about to enter Taurus season. Um, and that starts on the 19th. So that'll be on Sunday when that starts. And then we have a new moon in Taurus on the 22nd. Okay. So I'm not, you know, it's interesting, but I'm I'm more familiar with certain uh, zodiac signs than others. And I wasn't really familiar with Taurus. Um, and I wasn't really familiar with the astrology around Taurus. And it's mm. kind of one of those things where the... Um, it doesn't, like, exactly translate from, like, the um, constellation to the mythology. So um, <laughs> there's a little, when I was there's re- a little bull, There's a little bull and a big bull. So there's, there's Taurus um, and then there's Taurus Minor, right? Is that right how that one goes? So I guess there's two groups of stars, the Pleiades and the Hyades, that make up Taurus's head and then make up the rest of the body. But... It's interesting because it kind of come the the mythology of Horus kind of comes from two sources because you have um, the mythology of Taurus comes from two sources because you have the Egyptian god Horus who is the bull of the heaven and the sky god in Egyptian mythology and he's the son of Osiris and Isis in Egyptian right. mythology but it's interesting because um, Horus actually relates to the Greek god Ares, which is the god of war. So in Greek mythology, we have the story of Zeus um, and Europa, and, you know, yeah. Europa being being a bull and being, um, you know, this object of Zeus's affections, as, as many, as many um, deities were <laughs> the object of Zeus's affections, right, <laughs> if you know your mythology. <clears throat> so... Um, so, yeah, it was just interesting to kind of research uh, that. But, you know, Taurus is obviously well known for being associated with that bull uh, constellation, those bull qualities, right? So so we know them as being, uh, you know, reliable. And, you know, a lot of that comes with just they need the stability. And so sometimes people view that as being stubborn. But, they just really need a lot of stability and structure, and they're more conservative. Yeah. <clears throat> Which yeah. makes them great at being material builders. That's the one thing I know you've always told me is that they, you know, are great at kind of accumulating uh, material wealth and kind of building up towards a goal. Yeah, but they also have great health. So at this moment, yes. one of the things we really need is we need that Taurus influence for for health reasons, any child that is, any person that's born in Taurus, it also relates to some people that are born in Aries. But science says that a child born in April actually has a different chemical com- composition in their blood, something in there that they can't really explain. And so I find that if you, if you take and you work with somebody who's a Taurus, it turns out they have the most amazing health. I mean... And they really do very little to take care of their health, and they enjoy spectacular, sparkling health for, for, for decades. And it's kind of a, an interesting problem because they don't have any patience for people that have health problems. Because if they have a health problem, <laughs> they, they have somebody look at it, and they tell them what the solution is, they do it, and their health res- returns to normal. So um, of all the things that we need, I really didn't think about that. 
But Taurus coming in to the influence stabilizes the health issues that are going on right now. That's the stability that's needed. Yeah, so, and it's, you know, um, last time we talked about signs being associated with certain body parts, and so I have Taurus um, being associated with the throat. So, so yeah, we might, you know, so we, we need that good health, we need that stability and structure right now, right? It's kind of been a lot of unknowns and things like that. And then obviously we need that voice to speak up for us and, and um, you know, let us know what we have to do to go forward. Well, so do you have a, um, so we have the new moon. Yeah, so the new moons are always a good time to just, um, set new intentions, and with uh, the new moon in Taurus, it's a good time to set money intentions, um, and, you know, it's supposed to be kind of a good luck thing around finances and opens the door for a new financial outlook. So it could be the time to start a new job or a creative venture, Um and and Taurus season actually kind of has a lot of uh, energy to it as we kind of come to the end. I'll talk with you more about that next week when we get closer to those dates, but we've not had any planets in retrograde for a while, and the end of Taurus uh, season brings in four planets in retrograde. So no retrograde during this time when we need to come up with solutions, resolution and actual advances, so no retrograde. So if, if this had happened when the planets were in retrograde, this might have been something that we would have had a longer period of time to sort out the confusion. So no retrograde means that the amount of confusion was eliminated or delays, right? Yeah, so we don't have a planet in retrograde until the end of the month, April 24th, but um, it's also, it's interesting you bring that up. You're right, it pro- it eliminated uh, confusion, and retrogrades are just a time for us to kind of slow down, right? Um, mm-hmm. And this uh, time period, we were actually in Aries, which is all about energy and, and that forward-moving energy. So So, yeah, there were a lot of things kind of, to move things forward and eliminate confusion that we're on our side, right? Yeah. Aries is um, about fire. People that are in Aries are often um, are often thought of as the they're the newborn. They're the first sign in the zodiac, and a newborn has no awareness of anybody else. They're just aware of what they need, what they want, and how they feel. And people that are Aries, people kind of misunderstand that sometimes. I find that Aries just see what they say, and then they don't back out because they just go forward. They just go past it. So it it is kind of an interesting um, quality. I don't necessarily think that they're selfish, although the fire signs are said to be, you know, somewhat selfish. I just think that they really have great clarity about what a situation is, and that's not good for them, or they won't tolerate that, or it's not going to work long term, and they just push past it. it does leave a lot of people wondering because they don't have that sort of drive and ambition. So we do need that Aries energy to push past the pandemic in order to push into the next stage of recovery, recoup, and rehabilitating our lives. Yeah, I agree. So, And it's, it's always interesting to kind of look and see how some of those things lined up. You know, like you said, that the, the airy season, the lack of uh, retrogrades. And then, as, of course, as we're coming into Taurus season, um, you know, those, those stimulus checks are being issued to everyone right now. So it is a good time to think about what you want to do with those stimulus checks, right? It kind of just lines up perfect. Yeah, it is interesting, you know. Um, Mary Morrissey, you know, kept sending out, you know, information. And one of the things was is that the suffering occurs between your two ears. You know, it's like what happens in your mind is where you create the suffering. And so if you can take and just work hard and, and go to work and take care of what's in front of you, most of the time it works out. It just works out. So it's a lot of faith and a lot of trust. And I know that's kind of shaky ground, and I'm 
not trying to challenge anybody. I'm just saying, you know, you you move forward, and and your life does go forward. So that's just how I see it. But what a great update on astrology. Will you join us next week with a um, short report on what we need to be thinking about and how we need to be organizing ourselves? Of course, I'd be happy to. Okay, really good. Any final comments for us? Just think of those great new intentions that you want to set for that new moon next week. It's always best to write them down and just get those positive thoughts around where you want to go forward. It's a, it's a great, you know, just time to think about new new stuff moving forward and, um, you know, it's a great intention setting time. It's kind of a nice time to reflect. Very good. Thank you so much. Keeping it positive, keeping it moving forward. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you. And thank you. This is Suzanne Wyman, and it's been a great show. It's been a great conversation. You're welcome to call me at 714-400-7384. And um, please call me and tell me if you'd like to be on the show. The Deep Psychic Reading at gmail.com. I do write people back. It's an old-fashioned custom, but that's what I do. <sighs> Give me a call. Be in touch with me, and you're included And I'm looking forward to talking to you next week. Have a great day. Thank you so very much. Become a Goldilocks Productions VIP patron. Receive exclusive access to live stream special and other epic perks. Join the Goldilocks Productions VIP community today.